Hey guys, it's Chase with csjoseph.life doing another episode for season 22. This is episode 12, what are the cognitive transitions for the INFJ uh, archetype according to Jungian analytical psychology or four sides dynamics, uh, specifically to referring to the four sides of the mind. What a mouthful. So, cognitive transitions. What are cognitive transitions? Well, cognitive transitions basically are uh, that thing that allows you to go into the different sides of your mind. We have, we know the four sides of mind exist because of various evidence uh, that we see in our interactions with people in, in our lives. For example, when we're interacting with another human being or like having an argument, we can be like, okay, hey, you know, one part of me says this, but another side of me says this, and it's kind of like, you know, you have the, the angel or the demon, you know, on your shoulder talking to you and not. That's evidence of multiple sides of the mind. You basically have four personas living within your skull at all times. And you have your ego, your subconscious, your unconscious, and your super ego, etc. And they develop differently in different areas. And they actually control, this, this is your mind basically for an INFJ, and it controls the entire a direction and development of your life as we know it. And by the way, if you want to learn more about that, we go into super in depth about this entire process in season 19, episode 13, which is available at csjoseph.life forward slash members. It was available on Patreon, but we are actually closing our Patreon. Patreon will be going away and we are moving over to our members page. Don't forget, folks, if you are a patron, you need to move over to your the members page and get an account with us on the members page, and the cutoff is going to be June 1st. We will not be posting any new content on Patreon after June 1st. Make sure you guys understand this. Plus, if you do switch over to members from patrons on June 1st, etc., and you are, a pay, uh, you are a member on June 1st, you will be grandfathered in to keep access to Season 14, Episodes 1 through 8, and season 19 episodes 1 through 17. After you become, if you become a member after June 1st, you will not have access to those episodes anymore. So be aware of that. Super important. So commercial over, back to our regularly scheduled programming. So cognitive transitions of INFJ. INFJs are pretty awesome. They are, quite frankly, uh, the most important of all the types, except maybe INFPs, in my humble opinion, uh, especially since he, the humanity just can't really move forward without an INFJ. They have to move forward with them. And uh, this is kind of exemplified between since they are the finisher. This is why Jesus said when he was dying on the cross, quote, it is finished, because it is finished. And then as a result of being finished, he is the grand archetype, the logos archetype, as attached to the finisher archetype uh, for the human race as the INFJ. So in order for the, uh, in order for uh, the age to close and a dawn of a new age, a new way of thinking, a new everything to occur, well, the INFJ is the tip of the spear that leads humanity to that point, which is why they're so crucial. And it's interesting because they end up, be, so while they are the most valuable, they also can be the most worthless of all the types as well, and they just end up oscillating between the two. They can be completely novel and completely worthless, that they're literally like doing nothing with their life except playing World of Warcraft or League of Legends and sitting on their ass, not really doing anything or caring because they want so badly to get recognition, more recognition on the kill board, right, or the leaderboard. That's all they really care about at the end of the day, to prove to other people that they actually have skill because of their SC inferior performance anxiety. Yeah, okay, what a complete total waste. Kind of sounds like my, you know, INFJ mentor because he ended up becoming, uh, I mean, when I knew him, I, he, he hit platinum for a while. I think he actually made diamond and he was beating challengers on 1v1 on a regular basis, playing attack damage carry with Caitlyn or Jinx as well as some other uh, ADCs because ADC is the only role that he played. I dabbled a little bit with League of Legends and did support and jungle. I like jungle the best and definitely Trundle is my favorite character, but at the end of the day, it probably is not really something I should be spending my time on, so I gave it up as much as I gave up EVE Online and World of Warcraft and all these other dopamine creating things because I didn't really want to get uh, to a point where I was being, you know, uh, addicted to these games and spending time on that. So I decided to spend time on you guys and actually like create something and share this knowledge with you folks. Knowledge that luckily my INFJ mentor conferred upon me, which I'm very thankful for. Um, but to a point
point. I've been able to develop the science a lot since, since his influence, and we are moving forward uh, as a result of this presentation. So, cognitive transitions. So how do I identify an INFJ on the type grid? They're direct, they're responding, they're, they're progression, direct, they say what they mean, mean what they say, they're responding, they prefer to be kept in the loop on things instead of being the person that loops other people in on things. If you want to learn more about that, watch season 15. It talks about how to type people in the type grid, et cetera. Also watch season two. So season two and season 15 playlists on this channel explains like all of that so you guys know, so just so, so you, like, you do that. Other than that, uh, they're also very interest-based. They're aware of what they get out of situations. They're trying to work for the mutual benefit of themselves and other people, although sometimes they can actually manipulate systematic people and allow systematic people to take a lose while they get a win, while the systematic people are oblivious to win-lose situations. This is especially true with triple systematic types, uh, which are NTPs. And oftentimes, INFJs end up taking full advantage of NTPs because of that situation. So please be aware of that. They're also very abstract and committed to what if thinking and possibilities instead of, um, instead of um, you know, the what is. Kind of like the INFJ wife of my ENFP mentor who constantly accuses him of cheating on him on her, even though he doesn't actually do that and he's actually super loyal, but she's so worried about him you know, choosing somebody else over her or valuing somebody else over her that she ends up spinning these crazy ideas like, oh, this is out of the normal, you know, you're home a little bit later, who are you sleeping with, etc. And she literally makes these statements to him to his face, at least she did 10 years ago. And that's like a really scary and heavy business experience, but I've seen it with my own eyes. Wow. Yeah, like, stop being so worried that, you know, your man's not going to choose you. And, you know, the same thing goes for INFJ men. I've seen INFJ men get really, really bad, such that they end up assuming that uh, their lover has betrayed them, so they end up going sleeping with somebody else, be like, ha, see, it's fair for you to sleep around because I went and slept around too. And then they find out that the lover never actually did to begin with, and they're actually getting them a present or something in secret for their anniversary. And then the INFG is like, oh, wow, yeah, I done screwed up. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a thing that often happens with INFJs. And that personally happened to me with my former INFJ girlfriend, one of them at least. So anyway, that could be a serious issue uh, in that particular situation. I think Railgun is just taking the dog outside. Uh, so with that being said, uh, four sides of the mind. INFJs have the INFJ ego. You know, that's how you know what your type is. The type of your ego. Then you have your ESTP subconscious, ENFP unconscious, and ISTJ super ego. Do not forget, folks, that just because you know it's like oh you know MBTI letter dichotomies, you know, and it's like oh I'm an INFJ, but I'm feeling like really perceiving today, so like that must mean like I'm an INFP. Or guys, you know, I'm really extroverted right now, so I'm probably an ENFJ right now. No. That's not how the MBTI, the MBTI letter dichotomies are crap. Like they don't, they're not like actually legit. I made another lecture called the MBTI letter dichotomies debunked word for word. Look it up here on YouTube, on this channel, watch it so you can understand how the MBTI letter dichotomies and typing someone like, oh, that guy's really I right now. And he's so N and yeah, he's definitely a thinker. And he's so perceiving. So he's an INTP. Don't ever type someone that way. That, like that's that's actually stupid. Don't do it. There's there you can't type anyone using that method. The only tried and true method that is 100% accurate every single time, provided you actually know how to use the tool, is the type grid, which is what we've been talking about. If you want to get a copy of the type grid, go to https colon whack whack csjoseph dot life forward slash type grid to get yourself a copy of the type grid emailed to you for free. Uh, the type grid is the type grid 2.0. The 3.0 version is out and available at ultimatemessagingformula.com. And while it is selling people on how to increase their sales and marketing, it actually applies to every daily life conversation. So you might want to check that out as well. So it's a thing. It's out there. There it is. You know, if you want to get the upgrade, upgraded uh, type grid, you can get the UMF, which is on sale right now, half off, or you can just get the old one, version 2.0. Version 3.0 may be released for free at a later date, but not anytime soon. Probably with our Explorer launch, whereas we're on our Discover launch right now for the actual personality assessment that we have right now. If you want to get in the personality assessment beta, you should like probably check that out. CSJoseph.life forward slash members. Become a silver member. It's only five bucks for like a month. 
you have access to our personality assessments, online personality assessment beta, and we'd greatly appreciate your feedback. Hashtag commercial over. All right, so four sides of the mind. So uh, these are their four sides, and the thing is, is the reality situation is, is that while your letters, you know, don't change, because some people, everyone always asks me, do I, do my letters change? Am I always being INFJ forever? Yes, the answer is yes, you will. The difference is, you can actually become an ENFP, you could become an ESTP, you could become an ISTJ, and there's proof that this exists because you make these arguments where, like, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like, you know, a side of me is like this, but you know, I'm actually, this is my opinion right now, but one side of me has this opinion right now. And it's kind of like having an angel and a demon on your shoulder, that whole trope, etc. It comes from the four sides of the mind. You just have, and some of them are more active than others, for example, right? And in order to gain access to the four sides of the mind, you have to cognitive transition into the other four sides of the mind. And you can cognitive transition into two different ways. You could do it uh, chaotically or in an orderly fashion. If you're doing it chaotically into your ego, you're an irresponsible form of your ego. If you're doing it chaotically into your subconscious, you are a fearful, uh, insecure version of your uh, subconscious. If you're, if you're going into it chaotically and you're unconscious, you're very uncertain and full of worry, right? And if you go chaotically into your superego, which is basically the default and very common, in fact, it's extremely common, in fact, it's the norm, uh, you end up harboring hatred within your superego. How do you like that INFJs knowing that you are so capable of so much hatred, especially when someone betrays you? Oh, maybe have you considered that you actually deserve that betrayal? Have you ever thought about that? Are you really that great of a person that you didn't deserve that betrayal? You might want to consider that for a second. You, you, really, you really might want to consider it. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into that, though. Trust me. Don't worry. We're going to get there. So chaos versus order, that's how you can go into the different uh, sides of the mind. But when you're doing it orderly, they feel very responsible. Uh, they end up uh, being very secure in themselves. Uh, and uh, and then they end up getting humility instead of covering up with pride. And then uh, they're unconscious. They're very certain in themselves. It helps them gain grasping on wisdom. And then uh, by doing things in a loving manner, after achieving uh, orderly transitions from all this, the superego actually becomes a vehicle for love instead of a vehicle for hatred, which is consistent amongst IN INFJs on a regular basis. So that's chaos versus order. We're just jumping around here because why not? I mean, you think I actually plan these lectures for the most part? No, I don't actually. No, I just kind of let it fly. You know what I'm saying? And I usually just film it all in one take, even though this is technically my second take on this video right now. Right now, because I heard earlier, like, my wife was, like, actually, like, screaming or something or making being very loud as ESTPs can get, especially with uh, our dogs. So I had to refilm. But no matter. She's handling it, and uh, I love my wife dearly, and I just had to restart this uh, lecture to this uh, to this end. So, but anyway, so these are the four sides of the mind, and like whenever you're feeling extroverted INFJs, you're actually in your ESTP subconscious, or you are in your ENFP unconscious, etc. Usually if you're in an ENFP unconscious, it's just you trying to save face, or if you're in your ESTP subconscious, it's you trying to strengthen other people, or get some uh, wolf pack going on, or you enforcing somebody else's loyalty, right? Just, just to give you a couple examples, you know what I'm saying? So, these are the four sides of the mind, and that's kind of showing you the different transitions. Now, how chaotic versus order, how, why do we have the, why does it work like this? Well, it's because of these gateways. The gateway functions are the first function, the fourth function, the fifth function, and the eighth function. And the gateways are doorways into each of the four sides of the mind. If you want to get to your subconscious and become the ESTP, you have to go through your inferior function to gain access to it. If you want to, it's kind of like an irrigation system. Imagine this is like a farm and these are like different rows in these farms, right? And you're trying to, and each of these are four fields, but you have to have the proper irrigation system to move the water and the water is basically your soul, you know what I'm saying? So you, you spend a lot of time watering your ego or you want to water your subconscious, or you split the water between the two, or you split the water between the three, or you split the water here, or you focus all your water here, or you focus all of it here, or you split it here, etc. There's lots of options. But it goes through these irrigation channels, also known as the cognitive gateways, which is the first function, the fourth function, the fifth function, and the eighth function. They give you access to each of these four sides of your mind, and you can use them in a chaotic or an orderly manner, which is absolutely necessary to your own personal growth. For example, if you are not meeting your personal growth goals as a human being, life will actually throw a specific crisis at you so that you end up growing one of these four sides of the mind. You ever hear a quarter-life crisis? 
Quarter to life crisis is when your ego does not become developed and, you, and you're still using your hero irresponsibly. You're still using your hero chaotically, right? And that's what quarter life crisis is for. Midlife crisis, midlife crisis is all about your subconscious. That's what midlife crisis is for. Three quarter life crisis is all about your unconscious. And final life crisis, also known as death, that's actually for your super ego. And uh, these crises will get thrown at you uh, regardless of your development, and you have to prove to your mind, basically prove to the four sides of your mind, because these are actually four separate entities, four separate people, four separate souls actually living inside of your head, making up your spirit, etc. right? This is your spirit. This is like the structure of your spirit, right? These four souls coming together in this yin and yang equilibrium balance, four-dimensional, you know what I'm saying, right? And because of this, you end up becoming a complete person. Well, the problem is these sides of mind are actually disjointed. And by bringing them together in a form of integration, which I talk about heavily in Season 19, if you want to watch Season 19, especially the INFJ episode, which is Episode 13, you can see it at csjoseph.life forward slash members. But you have to be a gold tier member. I think that's like 25 bucks a month. Check that out. There is so much content available. Just letting you guys know that Season 19 will actually be disappearing uh, from uh, memberships on uh, June 1st, but you get to keep it if you're still a member on June 1st because you'll be grandfathered in to actually keep it, keep that in mind. So be advised. So the point is, is that you, the size of your mind are very disjointed and you have to bring them together. And I'll, and I explain how that works in season 19. That's not relevant uh, for here. But regardless, the four stages of life, which is Quarter life crisis, midlife crisis, three quarter life crisis, and final life crisis are all exemplified for each side of the mind. And every side of the mind ends up getting its day in court, right? You're supposed to be taught by your parents in adolescence personal responsibility. And that's how you start using your hero function in an orderly manner, personal responsibility, right? Uh, and then as a result of that, you end up going through your quarter life crisis during adolescence. That's what it's supposed to be. But nowadays, it just doesn't really happen until like, like mine, mine didn't happen. I didn't complete mine, my personal rite of passage, which is what quarter life crisis is. I didn't complete mine until 27 years old, sadly, and I'm 33. So I've only been out of that for like five years. And I already see my midlife crisis coming around. I could feel the pressure building up the back of my head, and it's literally bothering me every single day every single day. So I have to work on my subconscious, which is I such a subconscious, which is forcing me to uh, uh, read Dr. Eric Berg and uh, Thomas DeLauer and like all these different sources, etc. Uh, Mark Ripito, etc. Uh, as well as uh, learning uh, martial arts styles like Combat Fighter or uh, Jeet Kune Do and Bruce Lee and his philosophy, all these types of things that really helps develop the ISFJ side of my mind because if I don't do that, I'm going to have midlife crisis and I'm going to freak out. And I would like to avoid midlife crisis by prioritizing those things now so that I can actually meet all of those goals before the crisis actually takes place so that when the crisis actually comes, I pass it with flying colors, my mind is cool, and I can move on to the next level. Just be advised, three quarter life crisis and final life crisis, I actually talk about heavily in how to parent each type in season 23, which is also a gold tier lecture. We're doing how to parent all the types right now, so if you want to check that out, I highly recommend you become a member, a gold member, to be able to watch uh, season 23. Season 23 is only available uh, behind our paywall, so awesome. So, with that being said, these are the four sides of mind. Those are the cognitive transitions, right? But why, why is this necessary? Well, it really comes down to the purpose of life for the INFJ. It all comes down to the purpose of life. And the purpose of life for the INFJ is to make other people stronger to make other people better, to improve their fellow human beings, to create a wolf pack of strong people who are loyal to the INFJ, even to the point of being willing to take a bullet for the INFJ, so that the INFJ could utilize themselves and their wolf pack to provide world change in some capacity. Best example out there, Jesus Christ and his 12 disciples. The 12 disciples were his wolf pack. INFJ, so let me ask you, who out there are your disciples? Who out there are your wolf pack? Wait a minute. Are you actually even strong enough to take on a disciple? A disciple is somebody who comes and learns you. I am a disciple of my INFJ mentor, right? My former INFJ mentor. I was his disciple, and I'm no longer a disciple. I'm now a master. I start out with him. I was his apprentice. 
So INFJs, are you taking on people to apprentice? Are you taking people to the gym and helping them get stronger and healthier? Are you, um, are you, uh, are you uh, helping people on a project, computer programming, right? And uh, writing code and, and managing code and, hel and helping create an amazing software system that will change the world for the better. INFJs, are you going out of your way to fill out every single crack that, or, and problem that you see with inside of an organization, be it a business or a 51 c 3 Are you spending time volunteering? What are you doing? What are you doing to improve other people? It's one thing for you to go out there and help people, but it's a completely other thing to you know, get over your own performance anxiety and get to a point where you're performing in so, uh, such top shape for yourself that you're able to actually confer that knowledge of how to perform that know-how, that how-to, onto other people so that they themselves are becoming stronger themselves. That is the purpose of your life, such that as you begin to improve other people and you improve your disciples, they start improving other people. And so all of a sudden, you're actually helping hundreds if not thousands of people through this pyramid scheme of health through all of your disciples underneath you, all the members of your wolf pack underneath you, that the entire world is changing rapidly over time. This is where Christianity came from, right? That's how that works. You know what I'm saying? That's the entire process. That's what the INFJ is for. That's your purpose in life. But how the hell are you actually going to fulfill that when you're actually so broken? Because you people are broken. It's funny, actually. Society itself is structured in a way that's pretty anti-INFJ. But it's also interesting because... INFJs are 0.5% of the population of the planet, so one out of every 200 people are INFJs, so it kind of makes sense that things would be stacked against them by default anyway, because they're so rare. And they're so rare because they're so important. They're so rare because they're so critical to humanity as we know it. Like, that's, that's reality. They are very critical. Because humanity cannot advance forward in its own future to the next epic or epoch, etc., within, within uh, the, the, life, the lifespan of hu humanity, the, the, the next new age, they can't do it without the INFJ leading the way. But most of the INFJs out there are pussies. And it's because they're afraid of performing badly. This is why I constantly criticize INFJs for not driving. Because it's like they're, they're too scared to drive. They're too scared. Recently, one of my coaching clients, he's a 33-year-old man, he just recently passed his CDL license uh, uh, test after going at it for an entire year because he was so insecure. He passed the written test. The written test is really hard. Like, it's hard. He passed the written test on his first try, nailed it, but he failed. Driving test after 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 driving test because of his performance anxiety. He couldn't get over it, right? Because he was afraid, right? But, and I hero, he was responsible, and he never gave up. And he kept going, right? See, that's what's really great about INFJs. That's what's really great about I hero. They just don't let go of people. It can also be their downfall. Another INFJ that I coached, um, he uh, was in a relationship with an ENFP woman. This ENFP woman would play video games with him. She'd tell him nice things all the time to him and whatnot. But she was just stringing him along. And she was a cock hopper, quite frankly, and to the level of like, oh, there's this guy that has a lot more status than this guy that I play video games with. I'm going to go have sex with him. I'm going to hope that he chooses me when the, the INFJ she was with was not good enough. And he just couldn't let go of her. That's the thing about anti hero. Anti hero just can't let go. And especially when it's irresponsible, it just cannot let go. And he could not let go of her. And I had to sit down and criticize him and tell him over and over and over, she's just using you. She doesn't actually, she's not actually loyal to you. She will jump you on your head because you are a man who lacks status entirely. You still live with your parents. You don't even have your own place. You don't even have a job right now. What makes you so special? So she's obviously going to throw herself at the nearest special guy so that she herself can feel wanted and feel special and feel comfortable so that she can gain more status because status is all that she actually ever cares about. But you don't bring status. You actually bring her status down when you're around her. So explain to me why you're remotely important, why you're good enough, right? Why is it you can't let go, huh? Have you ever thought of that, hmm? Well, the reality of the situation is he was being irresponsible, right? Just like my other INFJ friend was being afraid, afraid of performing badly. It created a self-fulfilling prophecy where he kept on failing his driver's test over and over and over and over. And it was super annoying. 
it's really hard to coach somebody in that situation when they keep failing over and over and over and over again. And it's like, wow, should I just give up? You know what I'm saying? But no, he didn't give up. So there's a balance there. Same thing here. We already talked about the villain being worried about other people, you know, about not being chosen anymore, worried that you know someone else is gonna like your your lover is going to abandon you and is going to betray you. And this this worry is not just in terms of relationships. This worry exists in business. Worried about being passed up for for, for promotion. I'm not gonna be wanted enough to be you know have this promotion. I'm not gonna be wanted by my family. I'm not gonna be wanted by this. And they're they're so worried because they're so afraid that they're performing well. And because of this worry, it makes the performance anxiety worse, such that INFJs end up believing that they have to trade performance for loyalty. It's annoying. It's not true. But they believe it. And then when someone actually ends up abandoning them, probably because they're being alienating, because they probably deserved it in that moment, the INFJ gets all butthurt and blames them, and then it creates hatred in the introverted sensing demon, and the only memories they remember about that person is bad. You know, that person probably saved their life. It doesn't matter. They still abandoned me. They still abandoned me. I hate them. Wow. Arrogant. Conceited. Worthless. Yeah, that's effective, right? How does, how does an INFJ get over that? You know? why? Well, I, I thought the INFJ as a Templar type is one of the most forgiving of all the types. That's another way to identify an INFJ and the type grid. They are Templars. Templars all have these four functions within their ego. They're just in a different order, etc. That's what a Templar type is. And they are consistently the most forgiving of all the types. They're also the biggest hypocrites of all the types. Why? Because they tell everybody else around them to be responsible and to be strong, but they themselves are the most irresponsible and the weakest. And they know it. Hypocrites. Such times where they even sell themselves on this idea of, well, as long as I don't say anything, that means I could be irresponsible. As long as I'm not criticizing anyone, I could be irresponsible. Wow. Way to live out your purpose, right? So instead, because you're being irresponsible and not saying anything, not criticizing anyone with your TI child, you're actually enabling other people with your little epi child inside of your ESTP subconscious, such that you're actually causing other people to be weak. So you're actually doing the opposite of your purpose in life, the absolute polar opposite, right? And you're actually making other people weak because you're weak too. It's known as the reverse mirror, right? Where you're mirroring other people's behaviors, but when people mimic you, not mirror, when they mimic you, you're actually making them weaker because you're enabling them. INFJs, I challenge you to read the book When Helping Hurts. Stop enabling losers. Stop choosing losers for your wolf pack. Because if you have a wolf pack, sure, obviously, naturally, you're going to feel secure with your performance anxiety that those people in your wolf pack, wolf pack are actually weaker than you are, right? And then you can be the leader because you're, you're strengthening everyone. Okay, yeah, sure, I get that. Kind of nice, kind of convenient for Will Hunting and Good Will Hunting, who's like an INFJ, to actually be like, you know, and, and then uh, for the Robin Williams INFP character to be like, well, <coughs> he behaves the way he does because he wants loyalty. You can't find that loyalty because any of those friends would take a bullet for him. You can't find loyalty like that. And you're telling him that he's become this math whiz to work on this company with you? He doesn't care about that. He cares about the loyalty of his friends because loyalty is all he ever wanted. Well, the INFP knows that. I don't know why those other schlubs, that ESTJ schlub in that movie, uh, trying to get Will Hunting to do this math thing with him, this ISTJ guy as well, or woman, I, I forget. But regardless, he doesn't have anything to do with it. His loyalty is everything. But INFJs, do you not understand how responsible you are for the personal growth of other people around you? See, there is an INFJ out there who does understand that. His name is uh, Simon Sinek. Or Sinek, Simon Sinek, that guy, he is an INFJ, and he is he knows that he is very responsible for the personal growth and the strengthening of other people around him, such that he walks the part, talks the part, lives the part, breathes the part, is the part in every single way. He is not fake. He may feel fake because the INFP subconscious always makes the INFJ feel fake, but the reality of the situation is he knows that if he continues to perform, if he knows that if he continues to practice, he will be able to perfect his capability in making other people strong. Ah, right? See, Simon Sinek, he's not uncertain of people in his life 
betraying him or not wanting him anymore, ultimately leading to abandonment. He's not afraid of performing badly in front of other people. He's actually very responsible with the decisions he makes and very irresponsible with things that he wants in his life. And he preaches a message of love and not of hatred. How is this possible? How is this possible for an INFJ? Hmm? How? How indeed? Well, again, chaos versus order. Are you a person living in chaos or are you living in order? Order begets order. Chaos begets chaos. Order does not come from chaos. That's a lie. Okay? That's not true. Order does not come from chaos. Order comes from order. So you need to set the order. You need to change your mind. You need to change your mindset. The Bible says, for example, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. Good and perfect, pleasing will such that you can fulfill the purpose of your life, you know, to strengthen others, to improve your health, fellow human beings, to set the course of change and execute the vision and a better vision for a better future, for a better tomorrow, for humanity, because you have the guts to tell the truth, regardless of the consequences. You have the guts to tell the truth and use your fiery sword, your fiery sword of truth that cuts other people as much as it cuts yourself at the same time, because you're making sure you're not being a hypocrite in the process, right? In the fiery sword, your sword is your T.I. child, but the flames come from the N.I. hero, and it just coats your T.I. child, and your tongue is a literal double-edged sword that comes out and cuts people down, as it should. No one has cut me more than the T.I. child, the fiery sword of truth from my INFJ mentor. He absolutely obliterated me. He destroyed all the comforting lies in my life. He made me strong for you people because he wouldn't let up. Because he didn't care how I felt about anything. He didn't care about my little bullshit beliefs or my little feelings. My feelings, my titles, my status. Because I was like doing that with my INTJ shadow and whatnot. But he wasn't going to have that. He was just telling me the truth straight up because he saw me as weak. Because he knew I was weak. He knew that my beliefs were flimsy. INFJs, why do you put up with everyone around you being okay with comforting lies? Why do you allow yourselves to not verify your own beliefs? Huh? Why are you doing this? Oh, because I don't feel good enough. It doesn't matter how you feel. Stop making decisions based on how you feel and start making decisions based on what's true or what's false. It's T.I. Child. It's where your divinity exists. Get out of the critic. Who cares how you feel about anything? Do you think Simon Sinek doesn't feel worthless every day? Of course he does. But he makes a decision every morning, a decision with his NI hero to get up out of bed and make it happen. Not for his sake, but for others. Because he has to be responsible and take responsibility for how other people are feeling. How other people are doing in their life. How other organizations are running organizations. How other human resources departments are doing their thing. Whether or not people or workers are being valued by the companies that employ them. That's what gets them up in the morning. Because it keeps them up at night. Why? Because he was in that situation. And he saw the suffering of other people when he was working in corporate America. Even in the suffering of his own company. And he went out of his way to prevent it. And that's what he does every single morning. He found his purpose. And he is strengthening other people. He's strengthening businesses, strengthening organizations. He's strengthening everybody. Individuals. Anyone who is an entrepreneur. He's also strengthening millennials. Everyone's getting all pissed off at millennials. And he's like, millennials aren't the problem. The older folk are the problem. He's not wrong. Millennials aren't the problem. Do you know how I know? Because millennials are the hero function of the world right now. Baby boomers are the parent function, right? Gen X, they're the, uh, they're the inferior function, right? Actually, excuse me. Baby boomers are the child function. Gen X is the inferior function. The parent function are the people who are dying right now. Those are the people who fought World War II. And the new parent function is actually Generation Z. Good luck trying to convince Generation Z of anything. They are so pessimistic. They are so skeptical. 
There's a reason why. They're the parent function. That's their purpose. That's Generation Z's purpose. Don't cross them. You will lose. You will lose. The hero function, we are here and we raised Generation Z such that we gave them that pessimism and rightfully so. Also be believing, you know, crappy <laughs> untrue narratives from, you know, government, for example. Uh, but hey, you know, to each their own, right? Whatever makes you safe, right? You know, how about having dangerous freedom instead of, you know, the safety of slavery? Why don't you think about that? Hmm. Maybe you INFJs should figure that out because the ESTP subconscious represents that thing that's supposed to tear down the bullshit systems and bring about uh, a time of healing for everyone. Maybe you should consider that for yourself, huh? Well, you have to give in to, like, you know, the order. So cognitive transitions. We've already explained how you could chaotically be transitioning to the other sides of your mind, where you end up making people weaker, or you end up making irresponsible decisions based on what you want, right? Or you end up being so uncertain about other people around you, and then that uncertainty of, because I'm not good enough, and if only I was good enough, people would want me. If only I had enough status, people would want me. And this is where you INFJs end up believing the lie, where you think that education and credentials actually matter. Your credibility actually matters. The truth is credibility is worthless. Credibility is nothing more than ad hominem. It is a logical fallacy. Credibility is a lie. Oh, but you want to have your little comforting lies for your ENFP subconscious. Okay. Okay. That's effective. That's effective INFJs. How about you start telling people those unpleasant truths? Because by telling people unpleasant truths, you're making people strong. What business do you have, INFJs, being so afraid of telling the truth? Why else does Jesus say that I am the way, the truth, and the life? No one can come to the Father except through me. Have you ever considered why they say why he says that? Because T.I. Child is the truth, pure, unadulterated truth. The divine child is where versus divinity exists. Don't believe me? Read Energies and Patterns of Psychological Type by Dr. John Beebe. He explains this cognitive attitude. Or if you want the fast track version, watch episode 3 or 4, which is the Child Function episode of season 16 playlist here on this YouTube channel. You might learn something, right? Well, who knows? You, 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 have, to, you have to apply yourself for a second. You know what I mean? But anyway... INFJ ego. Okay, great. We've got our ego. So in comes the opportunity for you to grow because you got those, those crises coming. You probably should grow, huh? How is it you can utilize your transitions for the better? Well, you do it in an orderly way. Chaotic way, you take a big jug of water, you're just pouring that water on, it's going, blah, 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 and it's coming out chaotically. But you take that, that bottle of water, you slowly, carefully let the water come out carefully, and it's just a nice, smooth little stream. Right, right onto your little crops here, your little fields inside the farmland of your mind, right? You know, orderly transitions in your orderly irrigation systems, right? Hmm, maybe that would be important, right? We go way more into this in season 19, but I'm just going to talk about just the uh, the transitions here. By being responsible with your INFJ ego, you're making the right decisions. You're making decisions based on what you want. Your parent function starts to develop, and it's getting in between you making decisions based on, well, it's true that I want this girl, so I'm going to have sex with her. Well, it's true I want to eat this, so I'm going to go eat this. It's true that I want this. It's true I want that. It's true I want that. And you're actually just being selfish, such that your decisions are actually making other people around you unsafe, uncomfortable. Hmm? Have you ever thought about that? Have you, have you realized that, well, it's true that I want this. It's true I want to say this. It's true I want to do that. It's true I want. It's true I want. It's true I want. This is called cognitive looping. You know, Dave Superpowers that calls it jumping. No, it's not true. Jumping is not true. All it is is underdeveloped FE parent. That's all it is. It just means you're immature, okay? If you're a jumper, you're immature, okay? So the reality of the situation is, is that, oh, you know, well, my freedom of choice is actually making other people feel unsafe. And you're just creating unsafety. You're just creating alienation. You're just alienating people. And no wonder you're so alone all the time. You know? And it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> you're just alienating people. And then you're like, oh, no one wants me. No one wants to be loyal to me. No one's there for me. So I'm just going to commit suicide right now. And it's like, but you're the cause of that. Have you ever considered that? Have you ever considered that, you know, because... 
INFJs, I, and, I've, and I've actually saved a lot of INFJs in, in their lives in terms of you know committing suicide, and I have prevented suicide after suicide after suicide. My INFJ ex-girlfriend, for example, I you know she she was cutting herself like I prevented that. It was crazy, and oh what what a horrible situation. But the point is is that in that in that situation is that the INFJ often doesn't even understand. They don't even know how alienating they are actually coming off. Because they, their performance anxiety, that fear consumes them so much that they end up getting to this point where it's like, oh, I'm just alienating people. Oh, uh, I'm just going to cover it with pride because obviously I'm a top performer. I have to believe I'm a top performer to be a top performer. When they end up getting too lazy and too afraid of performing that they don't even bother practicing for that performance, right? Because practice makes perfect. No other type except INTJs benefits more from practice than INFJs. If INFJs just practice going to the gym, strengthening themselves, teaching the truth to people, telling people unpleasant truths, debating them, having all their research back up, knowing what the truth is, and spinning facts after facts after facts after facts after facts, after facts regardless of who it might alienate, right? Because they're actually strengthening people. Because when an INFJ has the guts to tell an unpleasant truth, people around them end up becoming strengthened. This is why Jesus says, he who has an ear, let him hear. What that means is, is that well, I'm going to tell you an unpleasant truth. You might, want, you might not want to hear it, which means you're just going to abandon me and go elsewhere on your way and be ignorant. Okay, but for those of you that stick around, those of you that are strengthened for me telling you the unpleasant truths, that at that moment, you are part of my wolf pack because you're listening to my message. And you are becoming someone who I can disciple, someone who will follow me. And when Jesus tells these disciples, follow me, when the rabbi comes around choosing you, follow me. Do you guys understand the significance of that? Do you know how hard it is to get chosen by a rabbi? There's in the affiliative way, you have to choose so much time and effort and be in a school and sponsored and going to university and get the degree saying, you know the Torah, you know the Bible, you know all this stuff, you know, and then you might be chosen by a rabbi. But no, nope, Jesus, he's the rabbi. He, he's an autodidact. He ain't got no official training. He never went to school. He didn't do that. He started teaching at the temple as a child. He don't need that crap. He don't need no diploma. He don't need no degree. The dude, did you know Jesus has got tattoos on his leg? You might want to look that up. But the point is, he's so badass, he don't need any of those credentials, mustache, nothing. Because he was an autodidact, you know, just like Will Hunting was an autodidact. Watch that, okay? He's an autodidact. And he's this autodidact rabbi, and it's like, well, oh, Mr. Jesus, how come you have, like, how could you be a rabbi? What's your credentials? And it's like, well, I know more than all of you people combined, so... And you ask me questions, and I answer them, and you're so astonished. It's like, yeah, that's why I'm teaching in the temple. Get over it. Who cares? You, Your little bullshit credentials don't mean anything. Who cares? Right? Well, it goes on. So, Jesus is around. He sees these right, this tax collector, corrupt dude, right? Maybe he was an ENFP. Maybe he was an ISTJ, corrupt little dude. Come follow me. Be my little wolf pack. Oh, to be chosen by a rabbi, the highest honor, the highest honor in the land? Of course you're going to immediately leave what you're doing. Because, I mean, the rabbis, they, they got all the status, you know what I'm saying? They got the most money. I mean, they have their own little private Federal Reserve central banking system in the temple. It's no wonder Jesus pulled out his whip and started beating the crap out of them and flipping their tables. You know what I'm saying? Because he even knew that usury, one of the worst sins that possibly exists, you know, loans with interest, right? It's horrible. It's a form of slavery, and he wasn't going to have it. And ESTP subconscious exists to break the chains, right? It's no wonder Daenerys Targaryen, an INFJ, was known as the breaker of chains. She was fulfilling her purpose in the story of Game of Thrones. Pay attention, people. So, it goes on. But, you know, Jesus, he's not, he not afraid... Not afraid, because he knows the truth. I'm the way, truth, and life, right? He knows the truth. And it doesn't matter how anyone feels about the truth. It doesn't matter how he feels about the truth. The truth is the truth, is the truth, is the truth, is the truth. Absolute truth. And his tongue is a double-edged sword, and it cuts him as much as it cuts other people. But he's not being a hypocrite. So he doesn't have to worry about that. INFJs, you can choose to not be hypocrites, 
Okay? As long as you focus on practice. Jesus was practicing his craft at all times. Practicing being a carpenter. Practicing being a rabbi. Practice, practice, practice. You have to practice your craft. Okay? And because the more you practice, the stronger you personally become as an INFJ, such that you could use your ESTP subconscious and then make other people strong as a result of the practice. Because you invite people to practice with you. And you confer upon them, you initiate them into your line of thinking or into your training, into your tutelage. You are the master, they are the apprentice. Why else was Jesus referred to as master all the time by his disciples? Have you guys even thought of that? You know what I'm saying? But that's the point, folks. Understand the difference, please. Okay? So get over your fear. Be responsible. Get over your fear and have faith in yourself. Have faith in the process, folks. Why do you guys get so arrogant that you won't allow yourselves to practice because you're afraid of failing while you practice? That's actually a form of arrogance. That's why the lesson of the subconscious is humility. When you actually accept you're not that strong, when you actually realize you're pretty weak, and you be like, okay, yeah, I'm weak, but I'm going to practice every single day to get strong. And then once you've earned your stripes, once you have put in the time and practice constantly so that you're so strong in mind and body, such that at that point you are able to strengthen other people through your subconscious, and thus you have your disciples, and you have your wolf pack, and things start to change for the world as we know it. Why aren't you doing this? Oh, well, I'm afraid of failure. Wow. If you're afraid of being in front of the camera, get in front of the camera until it gets burned in your soul. Who cares? If you're afraid of going to school, go to school. If you're afraid of going to the gym, go to the gym and fail over and over and over again, even if you're not getting results, until you figure it out. You have to practice because practice makes perfect. Aren't you INFJs, born perfectionists? It's so funny, you're the perfectionist that won't even bother practicing because you're afraid of failure. Oh, wow, how pathetic. Have you thought of that? You might want to think of that. Hmm? You who benefit from practice more than anyone else, you who can get stronger from practice more than anyone else, you who can make other human beings stronger and live out your purpose of life because of practice, perhaps you should be practicing. Maybe you should be responsible when you're practicing because maybe you should be practicing major things instead of minor things. Because if you're irresponsible, you're going to major in minor things, you know, like my INFJ mentor did when he became a master of League of Legends, when he became a master of World of Warcraft, majoring in minor things, huh? Well, Jesus, he didn't major in minor things. We're still talking about him 2,000 years later. Think about that. Think of the impact of his extroverted sensing inferior gone full aspirational because of his factor and his lack of fear that his ESTP subconscious made such a permanent impact on the world. We're still discussing him 2,000 years later. That's the power of the INFJ. That's the level of strength and impact that can happen on the INFJ. How many years are people going to be talking about the principles espoused by Simon Sinek, right? Think about that. Very long time. Such so that many organizations have actually adopted his principles, adopted his practices into their organizations, and people are having better lives for it. People are being strengthened. People are being improved because people actually matter in an organization that adopts the teachings of Simon Sinek. You might want to consider that, INFJs. You could have that too. Or there's the INFJs out there who are really good in the gym and teaching other people how to lose body fat and actually be healthy, right? Or there's INFJs who are like sticking it to, uh, to the man, like the doctor man, for example, and becoming holistic nutritionists, right? Those are pretty dope people, you know what I'm saying? But then, you know, you have to worry, you know, oh, I'm so uncertain that they're going to want me. I'm so uncertain, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go after that promotion because I'm so uncertain they're not gonna want me. Then you get passed up, and then you complain later that you got passed up when reality situation is you didn't have the guts to go for it because you were too uncertain, because you were too worried. That's on you. That's actually on you. INFJs, you need to understand. You need to get to the mental point in your life where you have literally nothing to lose. You need to get to that point. 
you have to get to the point where you are okay having everything taken away from you to the point where you are left for dead in a ditch in the rain, naked, with nothing, and understanding that no one else out there actually cares. No one actually cares. And you absolutely have nothing and nothing to lose. The faster you get to that point in your mind, the faster you will become strong enough to help others. And you will be certain at that point. Because if you live your life like every single day is your last, like you have nothing to lose, you will be able to obtain all things. Nothing will be impossible for you. Right? Just as nothing was impossible for Jesus. Jesus took down the central banking system of his time, their version of the Federal Reserve. He went in there and he handled it automatically on his own. He handled it. Uh, he, uh, he brought the world logos. Logos. He, he, he finished logos. He fulfilled logos. People started thinking about logos. Don't believe me? Even the occultists teach that Jesus was the source of logos for the world. You might want to check that out. Okay? Like, it's, it's, it's a thing. Okay? Because logos wasn't really popularized until Jesus came about, right? Then, you know, then Greek philosophers and the like, etc., and, uh, and whatnot, but it was completed through Jesus' uh, time on the earth, etc. So, but the point is, is that this uncertainty will get in your way. Don't let it get in your way. What business do you have being uncertain when you know that if you just practice, it's always going to work out? Right? What business do you have being uncertain? Because eventually, your performance is going to get so high, and your responsibility is going to get so high. What business do you have being so worried? What business do you have being so uncertain about things? Who cares? Who cares if everything falls apart? Who cares if you lose everything? INFJs, it's like you're holding on to things, holding on to people so hard, and you're squeezing them, and they literally pop in your hands. Like they all those sands, you're squeezing so hard and the sand just comes out of your fingers. That's literally expert intuition, nemesis. The harder you squeeze, the more they'll want to leave. And then all of a sudden you have NPs in your face telling you, well, if I'm going to do the time, I may as well do the crime. And then they betray you anyway because you deserved it. Because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's what it is, right? And then imagine how you're going to feel afterwards. Imagine the guilt. Right? Imagine the guilt. If you feel guilty, it's because you're probably being irresponsible. This is your parent function telling you, I should be more responsible. You shouldn't be making decisions. Well, I think I want this, and I think I want this, and I think I want this, I think I want this, I think I want this. The parent function wakes up, and it's like, oh, well, no one's going to value that if I end up making this decision because it's going to put other people at risk. It's going to make other people unsafe. It's going to give other people a bad experience. So, yeah, that's not really acceptable, so I'm not going to do that. And all of a sudden, you become responsible with your decision-making, right? Oh, responsibility. Then all of a sudden, you stop being afraid because you're performing better because you're being responsible in your decision-making. Hmm, I wonder how that works. And then you're very certain. You become so certain that it just causes people to wish they were your disciples, to wish they were in your wolf pack, such that... Those people end up listening to your disciples. They end up listening and learning from your wolf pack. And you're helping people through this huge pyramid scheme of help that ends up encompassing the entire world. Wow. And you end up giving other people a better future because you are certain of your own future. You are certain about your performance. You are certain in the truth that you teach. And you are certain that you are actually helping people by subjecting them to the fiery sword of truth. You are actually healing them by presenting them with unpleasant truths instead of fomenting and supporting comforting lies. I don't know how many times over the last three weeks that I personally have been held accountable for, for what? For, for shaming people publicly who deserve it and being told by INFJs that I'm very hateful, that I'm a horrible person for exposing these people for who they really are. Really? Really, guys? Why are you using your FE parent who's not very parental, not very responsible, why are you out there supporting comforting lies when you should be burning comforting lies away and teaching unpleasant truths to make a better today? You are the reason why the world is remaining ignorant. 
when you could be the reason why the world is becoming wise. That could be what you could be doing. But instead, no. Well, I need to be there for other people's feelings because I don't feel good about myself and I really need other people to recognize me and feel good about me so I can feel good about myself. Who cares? Who cares? Maybe you should just tell the truth. Maybe you should just be practicing and practicing telling the truth. It's because eventually the people that are still willing to have an ear and hear you, right? Those people are strong enough to handle your message of truth. They're strong enough to handle those unpleasant truths. Those people become your true wolf pack. Don't you want those people around you so that you have the highest integrity possible? Because if not, you're going to get people who love to hear those comforting lies and you might be the person telling them those comforting lies because you're too busy supporting their feelings instead of telling them the truth and then you end up mirroring them and then you lose integrity and then you become corrupt and you become the very thing you swore to protect against. You became the very thing that you swore never to be. Hypocrites! That's your future, INFJs. Unless you understand your cognitive transitions, a transition in an orderly manner. It goes on. Think of all of the people in your life who have abandoned you. Hmm? Think of all the people in your life who have abandoned you, who have moved on from you. Maybe it's because you were alienating them, but you didn't see it that way. They abandoned me. I did all this for them. Did you really do that much for them? Were you? I, I supported their comforting lies, and they still abandoned me. Wow, they probably would have stuck around if you had the guts to tell them the unpleasant truths. He who has an ear, let him hear. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse uh, 3 and 4, I believe, he says, The day is coming when people will turn away from sound teaching, and they will, they, uh, they will abandon sound teaching. They will gather up for themselves teachers, news media, pundits, talking heads, television programs, movies, documentaries, to teach them what their itching ears want to hear. And people will abandon all truth and logic and turn their way towards myths. That's the world we live in right now. The prophecy of 2 Timothy chapter 4 has come true. But then you're out there supporting the comforting lies. Great. And you're wondering why these people are abandoning you. Maybe you should have the guts to tell the unpleasant truths to get even more people away from you because Jesus said, I have not come to unite. I have come to bring a sword. I have come to divide and divide families. That's what T.I. does. That's what the fiery sword of truth does. Why aren't you dividing people? It's your job to divide because dividing and who can handle that division is the ones that are, it separates the weak from the strong. And then you find the people who are willing to be strong, who are willing to feel the fire of your fiery sword of truth as a paladin INFJs so that they can come to you and be part of your wolf pack and become stronger as a result of your direct influence and truth within your in their lives. What the hell? That's what you should be doing, right? But why can't you do that? Huh? Instead, you want to be bitter. You want to be bitter with your SID and bitter, oh, they abandoned me, and then you hate these people when it was actually your fault to begin with. Have you ever thought of that? Why is it you expect everybody else to take full responsibility for their actions, but you yourselves refuse to take responsibility? Have you ever thought of that? Have you thought of that? Where are you actually responsible? How many people have you actually alienated? Maybe you had this performance anxiety, and you had T.I. Child God complex, or maybe you had T.I. Child sex God complex. Huh? Have you ever thought of that? And then as a result of that, you alienate other people. You don't even know you alienate other people. This INFJ, who used to be a coaching client of mine, he's like, well, you know, I'm cool because I make more money than Chase, and I'm obviously more important than him, so we're going to listen to me because I'm obviously way smarter than him because I make more money than he does. I was super appalled when I heard that. One of my closest friends. Wow, so alienating. Of course I abandoned him. Absolutely. But then he blames me to this day for abandoning him. And it's like, wow, nice hatred you got there for me, bro. But one day you're going to realize, hopefully, that you were actually being alienated the entire time. Because if you push a loyal person too far to the point where they no longer give a damn, that's a meme, by the way, look it up. If you push a loyal person so far that they no longer care, is that on them for abandoning you, or is that on you? 
you who for some reason believe that top performance, if I perform well, that I could trade that for loyalty. If I have all the muscles, if I got the six pack, if I'm working out and pumping iron, that makes me more of a man, right? That means you as my woman shouldn't abandon me, right? Because I put all that work into that. Women don't care about that. Are you kidding? They care about whether or not you have strong character. They care about whether or not you, you produce more than you consume. They care about whether or not you are self-sufficient. You have your own car, your own job, your own home. That you are your own man with your own purpose. They care about whether or not you are going to take responsibility for your actions. They care about your character. Damn it. Pay attention. Oh, but you know, your attention span is all the way down here. Hmm, I wonder how that works out for you. Well, over time, as you have developed your responsibility and your faith in yourself and faith in practicing, and practice makes perfect, as you develop your certainty, you start to realize over time that all those people that abandoned you were justified in doing so. And then, instead of door slamming them like you have your entire life, oh, you're out of my life, oh, you're out of my life, oh, I'm cutting you out, you start to realize that you unjustly cut people out. Hmm. And then maybe you should go out of your way, maybe you'd actually want to go out of your way to talk to those people again and take full responsibility for your actions, at least for the part of it that's your responsibility. Sure, I'm sure you'd love to use your effy parent, maybe if it's behaving like a child for some reason, to hold people responsible for the bad things they did, but you still have to take responsibility for your actions. You expect everybody else to do it with your ESTP subconscious, but why can't you yourselves do it? Huh? Have you ever considered that, INFJs? Why can't you? Why can't you take responsibility for your actions? Oh, because that would mean that you'd have to admit that you did something wrong. Oh, and then you're going to feel guilty about that. Oh, we can't have that. We can't feel guilty. And if I have to take responsibility for that, you know, oh, you know, I may, I might feel, I might feel suicidal. Like, great, FI Credit, thank you for being super selfish. Thank you. Thank you. You're so selfish, FI Credit. When it should be wise about its self-worth and realize that by taking responsibility for your actions, you end up loving people. Because you're no longer using TI Child God Complex you're no longer judging people with judge, jury, and executioner and cutting them out of your life on a whim. You're actually going out of your way to understand people and understand that you were weak. And when you were weak, you alienated them. But now you're strong and you're capable of improving them and making them strong. But you can't do that until you forgive them. And you can't do that until you forgive yourself. So forgive yourself so that you can forgive them so that you can love them. I tell you the truth. The reason I am here talking to you right now and actually giving my precious time to you and this community is specifically because of this right here. I teach this psychology so that you can understand yourself, so that you can forgive yourself, so that you can love yourself, finally, such that because you understand yourself, you can understand others and teach them so that they can understand themselves and love themselves and forgive themselves and y'all can forgive each other and it will make a better world. That is my purpose here. But instead, I got people like you out there telling me that, you know, oh, you're hurting too many people's feelings because you're, you're telling the harsh truths. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but the man, when the man comes around, you know, on Highway 61, might want to listen to that, that song. I recommend the Johnny Cash version. It was at the end of the uh, movie known as The Hunted with Benicio Del Toro and Tommy Lee Jones. One of my favorite films, by the way. But the point is, when a man comes around, you might want to pay attention. You might want to love your neighbor as yourself. You might want to recognize that maybe you actually did alienate those people. Maybe you may have actually been the problem. You're so self-righteous. You're so holier than thou that you don't even realize it. That's the problem, folks. You need to humble yourself. You need to have wisdom. You need to have personal responsibility so at last you can forgive yourself and love yourself so that you can forgive and love others so that you can actually master yourself for once and actually have sober judgment instead of judge, jury, and execution where you actually follow due process instead of just taking the sword and whacking off their head and being done with it. You know, better than Daenerys Targaryen taking Drogon and burning down the Red Keep, burning down King's Landing. Wow. It's, honestly, it's pathetic. But you could do better. 
you could be responsible, you could practice and ha have any fear, a man of no fear, a woman of no fear, you could be certain that regardless of anyone no longer choosing you, it doesn't matter because you are still moving forward. You have your purpose, you have your mission, you're making the right decisions, you are practicing every single day, and you are taking full responsibility for your actions so that you can love your fellow man because it is up to you to love your neighbor as yourself. What business do you have, INFJs, loving others and caring for others if you will not care and love for yourself first? Explain that. Sadly, some of you can't. What's good, though, is that eventually some of you will. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, or enlightening, please like the channel, like this video, and subscribe. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions about cognitive transitions or INFJs. Uh, thank you very much for watching. A little fiery tonight. Hopefully the sound is not too bad. If you have any questions about the sound, please leave it below as well. I, 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 we're using a different sound system for this, so hopefully it works out. And it's all in one take, so... Uh, I hope it's a lot, not too quiet, not too loud, and that it actually worked out pretty well. So, so anyway, uh, with that being said, folks, uh, I will uh, see you guys. Uh, actually, I think I'll, I'll actually really see you guys tonight because I'm going to be filming for CSJ Responds as well. See you then.